Today we're going to show you how to trellis and prune tomato plants in your high tunnel. If you've been following our recent videos, you know that we designed the self-wicking tub to simplify watering your container garden. We showed you step by step how to build your own planters that will allow your plants to wick up the water as needed so that they are never again over or under watered. Then in a follow up video, we showed you how to plant peppers and tomatoes in these self watering containers. Now our tomato plants need to be trellised and pruned. Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate but especially in short seasons like here in Zone 3 in Eastern Canada. So subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and a comment and go to www.ShortSeasonGarden.com Sign up for my newsletter and check me out on social media on Pinterest, Instagram or Facebook at Short Season Garden. So in this video, we are assuming you have a high tunnel and are growing indeterminate tomato plants. A follow-up video will discuss outdoor tending of both determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes, as you probably know, if, if kept trimmed to a single stem, will grow to be 6 to 8 feet tall, even in our short season here in Zone 3. Of course, they can grow much taller than that in a heated greenhouse operation or in a warmer climate. Since we are in a high tunnel, we don't need to build a support system for our tomatoes. We already have supports at the top of our tunnel that will work perfect to hold up our plants. Here we are using baler twine available at your local farm supply store, but any strong twine will work. Remember that once the plants are loaded with full-size tomatoes, they will get heavy, so don't go cheap on the twine. We use the clove hitch knot because it is easy to untie later, but any secure knot will work. Measure and cut a string for each plant long enough to reach from the top of the high tunnel to the floor. Tie a string above each plant. Each string needs to be secured at the bottom. We could have drilled a hole in the side of each tub to secure the string, but it is better to go right to the base of the plant, so we opted for landscape staples. Each length of string was tied to a landscape staple and pushed snugly into the soil at the base of the plant. We usually start by trimming off all the leaves on the bottom of the plant up to the first set of blossoms. This accomplishes three things. Number one, it keeps the leaves from touching the soil and contacting soil-borne diseases. Number two, it allows more air circulation, which again helps prevent disease. And number three, it sends more energy to the blossoms producing the fruit. Any tomato plant, if left to its own devices, will produce multiple suckers. A sucker is a new stem that forms between the existing stem and a leaf. We can leave these suckers in determinate plants but we need to remove all suckers on the indeterminate plants usually grown in high tunnels or greenhouses. If you live in a warm climate or have a heated greenhouse, you may want to leave two suckers near the base of the plant, allowing three main stems to form. But here in zone three, we do well to get one main stem to six to eight feet high during a growing season. See, there's a big sucker right there. I missed that one earlier, apparently. There's a sucker right here, that sucker needs to go. And then there's one more way down under here. Right there, that little sucker needs to go. This is just opening it up so the air can get underneath. Oh, there's another sucker right there. I wouldn't have seen that one until next time. You can buy an assortment of clips or ties for attaching your tomato vines to the string. We opted for a homemade clip cut from inch and a quarter PVC electrical conduit. We like to attach a clip every foot or so up to the stem of the or up the stem of the tomato plant, putting at least one clip for every cl cluster of blossoms. Push the ring open. I like to put it on the stem first, up above the leaf. 
string in and just turn it. There we go. Put another one up here. Instead of using clips or ties, you can carefully twist the tomato plant around the string. And you just take and put the string around very gently so you don't break the leaves. But like that. <laughs> You can even use a combination of the two methods, using some clips or ties and also twisting part of the plant around the string. Once we get into the heat of the summer, especially in a hoop house, your tomatoes will grow fast so you need to tend them often. A good practice to develop is that every time you water and fertilize, remove all new suckers and make sure the top of each plant is secure with a new clip or tie or an added twist or two of the plant. And again, if you do this when you water, there's a sucker right here, that sucker needs to go. Every time you water, you look for them little flowers. 